Hello to Wednesday in the Word. This is Roger and Cheryl, and we are so glad to be with you today. We just invite you to sit back, get your Bibles, your notebooks, and just get ready for the Word of God, because uh, we're, we're going to see God do some things and, and feel like God's uh, God's reaching out. You know, we're in a day whenever... Uh, I'm reminded of John Wesley. Wesley, the reason the... the uh, Methodist Church is, is uh, uh, functioning today is because uh, called Methodist is because Wesley brought different methods of preaching the gospel. And you know, while my, uh, my favorite uh, way of preaching is always uh, face-to-face with you and our favorite way of teaching is face-to-face where you can be interactive and ask questions, you can still do that if you want to comment on the uh, uh, on the comment section and all we'll we'll try to get back with you with an answer but um, but anyhow uh, today we have to improvise we have we come to you through Facebook and YouTube and whatever means uh, that we're coming to you right now um, and you know we are available sure we're available for uh, meetings available to come uh, and, and minister and uh, we, we are doing some stuff locally in Cedar Town and uh, as well, and, and God is moving in, in the earth today. Now, uh, anyhow, there's a lot of stuff that's just stirring in my spirit, but Cheryl has prepared, and, and, and we're going to share together in some time, uh, mainly her, because uh, this is on Wednesdays, we do the uh, Wednesday in the Word, the teaching, and uh, Cheryl's going to get in here, and Cheryl digs it out. Cheryl motivates and... and um, stimulates thought in me that expands me that that causes me to reach uh wider uh you know i like to go deep sometimes but sometimes we need to go wider uh, to understand the length the breadth and the height of everything so um, as we come to you today we're just thrilled to be a part of you uh <clears throat> just before we pray we're going to pray and this little song's been going over in my spirit And uh, I want you to worship with us. You know, let's invite right now. I want you to invite Holy Spirit to come where you are. And I want you to invite Holy Spirit to be there. Cheryl's a teacher. That's her calling. I'm uh, I'm apostolic and prophetic. Uh, But uh, Holy Spirit's the real teacher. He's the one that can quicken the the Word of God in you and make it come alive. But how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will say how great, how great is our God. He's the name above all names, and He's worthy of our praise. And My heart will sing how great is our God. Now pray with us and let's just invite Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just invite Holy Spirit to come be in in the midst of us as we speak. Use our uh, lips, our vocal cords, our minds, every part of us, God, but also be uh, in the location. We have people all around the world that listen to this broadcast. And Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you can be right there. And you can speak their language. You can you can interpret anything that's confusing. Uh, God, all across America and around the world today, God, we thank you, Lord, from from our little studio here right in Cedartown, Georgia. Uh, God, all the way around the world, God, we thank you, Lord, that the Holy Ghost is moving. All over the world, the Spirit thank is moving. You, and here today, God, we thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God is upon us, God, and anointed us. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for the Word of God you've stirred up. Uh, in Cheryl's heart, and God, as we share together today, God, our, let our lips and our vocal cords and every part of us, God, be yielded unto you to speak and bring forth truths, God, that will uh, edify and build up the body of Christ today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, Cheryl, what is you teaching on today? We're going to start a new series today, <clears throat> and it's called The Whole Armor of God. But before I start it, God spoke to me yesterday morning, (coughs) excuse me, and 
it just sort of <laughs> surprised me to tell you the truth what he said, but he said, I believe in you. Now, that's a very common phrase. You know, they use that in psychology a lot, believe in yourself and, you know, all this kind of thing. But it was such a strong word to me, and um, I wrote down the consensus of what he was saying. And so I'm going to read that because this word belongs to the body of Christ. <clears throat> And it says, God believes in us. He knows our strength and fortitude. We are able to do what he asks and to come out victorious. He knew us long ago and fashioned us in his image. It seems easier to quit, but it isn't because we would just face the same thing again at a later time. We're not wimps. We're powerful. <laughs> Now, Amen. that's just the truth. Amen. And this is how our Father sees us. If you are a born-again believer, this is how God sees us. And the reason, the primary reason He sees us that way is because it is Christ who lives in us and lives His life through us. And that's where we get our all of these wonderful attributes from. So we're going to uh, primarily focus on Ephesians 6, but I want to give a little background information first about Ephesus. So in order to do that, I want to go to Acts 19 and read a couple scriptures here, uh, verses 23 through 29. And it says, and the, and the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be no gods which are made with hands, so that not only our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. So <clears throat> that is a little bit of what was taking place. In, in the city of Ephesus. And um, just sort of as the same as Jesus, things, and even today, things sort of revolve around money, whatever the monetary system is at a place. And when they, they feel a, a group of people, or craftsmen as they called it here, feel threatened that they're going to lose their money system, then it stirs up anger, it stirs up fear, and so that's how they responded in this situation. <clears throat> now, I did a little bit of research about these silver shrines that they were making, and uh, back in this time period, the Temple of Diana was considered to be one of the seven wonders of the world. And it was just apparently this magnificent building and took them something like, I don't know, 20, 20 years or something. Let's see, the Temple of Diana. And yet it was 220 years in building. So 220 years in building is uh, how long it took to build this great temple. And it was had these beautiful columns in front and that sort of thing. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that these silversmiths, these craftsmen, were making little um, individual temples that the people could come and... Um, 
purchase and then they could take it with them and if they couldn't get to the temple to worship Diana they could worship with this little shrine that they had bought which was a pretty from what I understood in my reading it was a pretty exact replica of the temple of Diana mm -hmm. and so um, they had people all over the known world at that <clears throat> time coming to purchase these little temples because that was their primary god that they worshipped <clears throat> so this is the background of uh, the city of Ephesus and where Paul had ministered and now in the book of Ephesians he's writing to the Ephesians to kind of point out some things to them and remind them of some things so <clears throat> the first thing I want to start with is Ephesians 1 1 through 3 and it says Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. So Paul is beginning this letter, um, with very important words because Diana or in uh, other language was called Artemis same person Diana or Artemis um, was such a renowned figure as a goddess that Paul begins by reminding the Christians that they are saints and they are faithful in Christ Jesus and to Amen. Christ Jesus and so they belong to God. So he was putting them in remembrance of this because I'm sure even after Paul left that all of the people who still believed and worshipped Diana were still all around everywhere. Um, it's kind of like influences in any country. Whatever the main thing is, you know, there's influence of it all around and it can affect us. And so we need to be reminded that we're not the same as everybody else. We are saints of the Most High God, and we belong to the true and living God. So, <clears throat> uh, the people who worship Diana, this is what they believed about her. They believed that she brought them the promise of fertility, long life, sexual fulfillment, and protection during pregnancy and childbirth. Uh, it stated that there was also a lot of sexual immorality in their worship of her, which is very common um, in w idol worship. She mm -hmm. was very similar to the Ashtaroth that's listed in the Old Testament. Um, they compared pretty much along the same lines. So Paul reminded the Christians at Ephesus that they're blessed, but it wasn't by Diana. It was uh, through Jesus Christ and through their being born again. So <clears throat> he goes on then to tell them that they were dead Amen. and they formally walked according to the prince of the power of the air, living according to the lust, but now they're no longer dead, but they're made alive in Christ Jesus. And then Paul goes on, in chapters 1 and 3 to introduce them to two prayers which are wonderful prayers to pray over yourself over your children over the body of Christ it would be worth your while to look into them if you're not familiar with them but Paul continues on then in the book of Ephesians and he gives a lot of instructions and we're not going to cover all that because our topic is the whole armor of God. So I want to kind of move on. But I will just say that the chapters up to and the very beginning of chapter 6 are instructions to the church over a lot of different things. So <clears throat> when we get through and we get down to chapter 6, then Paul uh, begins his ending of this marvelous book that we call Ephesians. And he does this by showing us how we protect ourselves and what our responsibility is. 
So I want to read now um, Ephesians 6, 10 through 24. Do you have anything to say? No. All right. And this is the basis of what we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks. And it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, in other words, and pray for me also, and here's what Paul wanted them to pray, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak but that you may also know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a be beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things. And he goes on and speaks a little more, and then he says, Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Be Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Now Paul, as if you're a student of the Bible, you might remember he had so many difficulties and trials and persecutions because he had been sent by Jesus Christ to be the primary um, person to bring the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. And the Jewish, he went first to talk to the Jews in the synagogues throughout a lot of Asia and all that area. But the Jews became so angry because he was preaching salvation through Jesus Christ and that you really didn't have to do all the works of the law which had been laid down under Moses. And this was very offensive to the Jews. So they followed him really from city to city, stirring up trouble on his behalf. And so <clears throat> Paul had learned some things that he was getting ready to tell the uh, new saints. Now these are Gentiles that have come out of all this heathen worship. So he was giving them instructions and telling them how they could stand and not be afraid. So the first uh, thing we want to look at is in verse 10. And I'm, I am going to take some time to break down some of these words, and here's why I'm going to do that. If you're a Christian and you've read the Bible all your life, sometimes we become so familiar with what it says, it kind of loses some things. Now, that doesn't happen on purpose. That's just the way things are. We live life. We have other things. But... Uh, I find that sometimes also in the English language um, it's not as expressive as the Greek and Hebrew. So sometimes digging a little bit deeper helps us to really understand what's being said more clearly. So verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. All right, so the finally here is like him saying, all right, now I've given you all these instructions. So since you have all these instructions, 
I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So this word strong here that he uses is in strengthened. I love that because it's something that's inside of us. Of course, we know as Christians, it is the strength of God, of the Christ of God within us. So, uh, in, the next word, in, be strong in the Lord. That word in means a fixed position in pl place, time, or state. The word power means force, strength, might, dominion, inherent power. Inherent means that it's already existent in someone or something. In this case, it's existing in us. Um, <clears throat> might means might, strength, power, inherent, and in action as used of God. So what I did is I sort of paraphrased this verse so that we could pull all these words together and it would make sense. All right, so here's the way that I put it together. Finally, after all the previous instructions, be strengthened from your fixed position in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his force, his dominion, his mightiness, and his strength that resides in you. Now, when you look at that, that's just the truth of the matter because, as we will find out in a few verses later, that uh, we do have enemies, and there's a reason that God put in the scripture about the armor of God and how to use it properly. So let's move on to verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now these verses are from the King James Version of the Bible and some of it is Old English that we're not, you know, real familiar with in this modern day and time. So put on means, well let me say this, if you know anything about grammar, it's, it's the middle voice now. It's been years since I had grammar, so I have to constantly remind myself of what the, these particular things mean. And they put it in there because it has significance. So put on is number 1746, and it is the middle voice, which means the subject both performs and receives the action expressed by the verb put on. Mm. So, um, it's putting on oneself, it's to enter into or to get into, such as to get in your shirt or your trousers, your jacket, into some type of clothing. The Strong's actually says to sink into as into a garment. Now, whole armor means all the army, armor, full armor. Not, not partial, but head to toe armor, all of it. <clears throat> and this was emphasized over and over and over in everything that I read. And it's very important because if you go out half-dressed, first of all, people are going to be shocked. <laughs> and second of all, you're not going to have what you need for the day. If it's wintertime, you need to dress for wintertime. Summertime, so forth. So in this Christian walk, we need the whole armor of God. Every single piece of it. Amen. All right. The phrase may be able. Let me reread the verse. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Um, the phrase may be able means to be able. It also means to have power, whether by your own ability or by the resources or through a state of mind or through favorable circumstances. Now that's very important because as we go through this we'll learn how much the state of mind plays a part in all of this and why we need this armor. Um, <clears throat> 
To stand means of steadfastness, firmly fixed in place, unmovable. And then against is a very, very interesting word. It means close to, very close to. It means forward or toward. The wiles of the devil means deceit, trickery, cunning, cunning arts, craftiness, to follow up by investigate to follow up, excuse me, or investigate by method and a settled plan. The word devil means traducer, which means to expose to shame or blame by means of falsehood and misrepresentation, a slanderer. Now, we're running out of time here, so I'm going to read you how I put this verse together using these words. Take action and sink into the armor that covers from head to toe, that comes from God, where you have power and resources from a sound mind and God's favor <coughs> surrounded you, surrounding you. This causes you to be steadfast, firmly fixed in place, and unmovable, against the deceit, trickery, cunningness of the one who shames, blames, slanders, who is known as the devil or Satan. Mm. And that's all we have time for today. We'll pick it up on our next session. We'll let Roger finish up. And we bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, Cheryl, I, you know, just looking, just looking at the title of the lesson, I, I believe it's, uh, I know it's God moving and, Whenever God begins to bring a message <clears throat> to the body of Christ, and uh, you're part of the body of Christ, you're listening today, and a message to the body of Christ <clears throat> it's for a purpose and for a reason. I believe this is a very <clears throat> timely message. Um, and if God's saying to us, put on the whole armor of God, just as He said to the Ephesians, there was a purpose. There was a reason. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Cheryl, a lot of times people fight battles, but they've not prepared themselves. They've not put on the whole armor of God. They've not, uh, they're not uh, confident in their salvation, confident in their place in God. So God, by the Holy Ghost, is speaking through you today to put on the whole armor of God. And like you said, it's going to be a, a series and God's going to build upon this. But I want to and encourage you, don't miss these sessions because uh, and, and be there uh, ready to take your notes, ready to read the scriptures. Um, like Cheryl said, you don't have to read them in the King James. We use King James because that's uh, being here in the South in America. <laughs> it's kind of uh, uh, what we use. As King James, and to tell you the truth, I, I'm I'm not big on some of the newer uh, translations. But uh, you know, if you're hungry for God, Holy Spirit will teach you. Holy Spirit will, will go deep, like Cheryl dig, digs in the Word of God. But he said, "Put on the whole armor of God." I thought it very interesting as Paul's giving that instruction. Uh, one thing that he said here uh, to the Ephesians uh, when he was asking, uh, talking about. Uh, Praying for one another. He said in verse 19, And pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. Where was Paul's battle? Paul's battle were, were those voices, were those uh, fiery darts. And I, I don't think people were standing throwing fiery darts <laughs> at him. Uh, but it was fiery darts, words that were coming at him. That was the battle that he was having to, to uh, come against whenever he... Uh, was preaching the word whenever he uh, would begin to get in the you know Paul Paul got his revelation of Jesus uh, the scriptures that he used was out of the Old Testament mm -hmm. uh, he said that in many places uh, that that uh, the law and the prophets testified of Jesus and he would tell you how uh, they testified of Jesus well in that day there was resistance uh, we look at what was happening here with uh, with Diana. And you know the the truth is all uh, a lie is always threatened by the truth. Yes. Whenever the truth begins to come forth, uh, there's threats. So that's why the enemy and and you know 
Uh, again, I want to go back one, one more time. Somebody's been going through a battle, but you've been trying to go through it without putting on this armor, without putting on, uh, put it, taking the Word of God and uh, letting the armor uh, be put on you. Another place I saw, Cheryl, that really jumped out at me, uh, the scripture here in, uh, I think it's verse 23, uh, it says, Peace to you, brother, and love with faith. I, I thought that combination... Uh, you know, some of you have a battle loving. Well, you have to love with faith. You have to decide this is what I do. I'm, I'm, our time's up, and we got to go. But, but, be part of these uh, lessons every week, and do some homework. Get in to read the scriptures and prepare yourself, Father. In the name of Jesus, as we go off today, we ask you, Lord, that you will. Just minister grace and mercy, Father. We thank you, Lord, that the whole armor of God, clothe us with that whole armor of God that Cheryl's teaching about, the Holy Ghost is prompting in our spirits. And God, let your life stand up in us, God, with, the, with all the protections of the Word of God. We give you praise. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. We appreciate you uh, tuning in today, next week. Uh, 1230 on Wednesdays is when we come 1230 Eastern Time and it may be different around the world or you may be watching it on a video after the fact but God bless you for tuning in and the anointing of God is there put on that whole armor of God hello let me talk to you just a moment before we go off the air because uh, this we walk this ministry by faith and you know I'm reminded of uh, uh, of Paul's letter to the Philippians whenever he uh, talked to them not that he needed a gift but that fruit may abound to their account and uh, we are a faith ministry we our vision is across America and around the world we do things locally as well as uh, abroad and uh, God uses us but we need your help we need you to stand with us we want to expand this is 2022 and in 2022 God's given us a mandate to begin to expand and prepare uh, to go further than we've ever went, to do more than we've ever done. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we could sit back and just uh, be comfortable at home, but God, that's not where our heart is. Our heart is to, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We want to expand this uh, video beyond just uh, the live and beyond YouTube. We want to expand it uh, into television and, uh, and, and uh, there are opportunities, but we need your help. So, uh, if you will, let me give you, there is a link on our Facebook page that I try to keep up there often and you can find it, a link that you can go on to give if you want to give, or you can mail uh, to uh, your offering to us at P.O. Box, it's Roger Hutchins Ministries, P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown, Georgia. That's Roger Hutchins Ministries, P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown, Georgia and uh, 30125 and thank you so much god bless you and we look forward to hearing from you in jesus name